So, let's try to sum up this man. So I would like to introduce Rav Nachman by quoting here something from Rav Nossin, Rav Nachman's great Talmud. What Rav Nossin wrote about uh, Rav Nachman's boyhood years, what Rav Nachman said about his boyhood years. And this is what Rav Nachman said. The Kama Pa'om Mohi Medabal Fnei Hashem Yizbarach I mean, everything I say, Rav Nachman, I'm relying heavily on Dr. Arthur Green here. Forgive me. The Kama Pa'om Mohi Medabal Fnei Hashem Yizbarach Divrei Tchines Uba Koshos Mi Libo And many times... Rabbi Nachman would speak before Hashem Yisbarach the seachings and pleadings out of his heart. But Afal P came despite that, how you need more like it was all, it always seemed to him, that they are pushing him away, distancing him from the divine service, with all kinds of distancings. As if in heaven they don't want him at all. Because he used to see Shechovin Vaoven Kama Vakama Yomim Vishon. Because many days and years go by, Vadayan Rocha Kme Hashem is Barak. And he's too far from God, like Zocha Dayan Shum is Karvis. And he didn't merit at all to, to have any expression from God of love, or, or any expression from God that God is bringing him close for years. He struggled for years, praying and begging to feel closest to God. And even after all that struggle, and even after all those prayers, Rav Nachman felt that he's very far from God and God is keeping him at a distance and doesn't show him any sign of favor. Despite all that, he strengthened himself greatly and didn't give up his stand. Many times it happened. That he used to get depressed because of that. Because he saw that he was praying that he should be drawn close to the service of God. And they're not looking at him at all. And because of that, he fell sometimes in his mind. Sometimes he fell in his mind and he wouldn't talk with God like that in his way that he had where he would speak between him and God for a few days. But then he would catch himself. He became embarrassed. He became embarrassed, he became embarrassed that, he, that he wondered about the, the correctness of what God was doing and keeping him at a distance. And he would begin again to, um, to pray and to talk before God, as previously mentioned. And so it was many times. In a similar vein, in a similar vein, Reb Nossin writes about uh, the way it was for Nachman. There wasn't any aspect of, divi- of divine service that came easily for him. Every single thing came to him only with tremendous efforts, with great effort. He, he exerted himself and strained himself many times because of every aspect of divine service. It was extremely uh, <coughs> difficult and hard for him to get into the divine service, the Kabbalah of Ulav in order to accept upon himself the yoke of serving God. And he, he would, uh, his custom was to start for a few days to try to get involved in divine service. Then he would fall from his level. Because of Lahaskal. And he would start over with the divine service. Because of Enophil, and then he would fall again in his spiritual level. So it was for Nachman many times over. He would rise and fall and rise and fall. At Shapam Echo, until one time this Chazik Yetzloi, one time he encouraged himself very strongly, she Yechazik Moed, that he would be very strong. She Yoichaz Bavoyt Sashem Lo Oilam. He would, he would uh, hold on to the divine service forever. And he wouldn't look at anything in the world, nothing would disturb him. Umeyoz Vaholo, this Chazik Libe Bashem. Once he decided to hold on to divine service in that way and not look at anything, he became strengthened in the service of God. And despite that, even after that, he had many rises and falls, many rises and falls. And he used to start, uh, make up his mind to start over always anew, anew, as if he never did anything before. The Hainuk Shanaf Madrigosoi. When he would fall from his level, sometimes he wouldn't give up because that Rakama just he said she asked him Khodosh, he would start from Luke, 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 he would start from
you would start from new as if, as if he was never involved in divine service at all. And he had many beginnings in Avoid. Many times he fell and he fell into the spear. And he, it's, he sometimes he would start over many times in one day. Sometimes in one day, he would fall away from divine service. And he would start over from the beginning. Sometimes it would go like that many times in one day. Many times in one day. So, uh, what, what kind of man are we talking about? I mean, uh, he wants to serve God. He wants to serve God with all his being. That's what he wants. This is his goal. But he, he's constantly beset by the problem that he feels that God is distancing him. He seeks closeness to God, but it doesn't come easy to him at all. He constantly feels again and again that he's being held at a distance. He's unable to become close to God. He's unable for, for a time. He can achieve the feeling of closeness that he seeks for a time. But then he falls back. Then once again he falls into a, a state of feeling distant, of feeling distant, of feeling distanced. He can't get there. It's a constant struggle. It's a constant struggle. Now, um, so here is a man who is uh, struggling severely on a regular basis with the spear, with the feeling of alienation from the divine. Now, talking about the Benachim's divine service and about his character, uh, there are aspects of Benachim's character where he's somewhat different from uh, somewhat different from what we usually associate with Chassidus. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, first of all, the Reb Nachman, like others, like other representatives of Tzidz Shederich and Avoid, stresses Simcha. He stresses the necessity to rejoice in the service of the Lord. However, he qu- was quite open with his disciples, apparently, at least some of them, about the fact that uh, he would fall into the spear again and again. He, could, he apparently could talk about these things openly, revealing this about himself, the fact that maintaining a joyous attitude in, 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 in the practice of divine service was very difficult for him. He would fall over and over. He would fall from his level over and over. He was different. Uh, Rabbi Nachman practiced asceticism. Rabbi Nachman was young. He fasted a lot. We, we spoke about the fact that uh, the Baal Shem Tev, uh, a, a number of times uh, spoke disparagingly of such things, but Reb Nachman, his grandson, fasted a lot. Reb Nachman would uh, be oisik and gilgul shaleg. He um, used to roll about in the snow. He, uh, he, uh, he desired to break the hold of, of worldly desires upon him to the greatest extent possible. He was particularly concerned when he was young about breaking the hold of uh, sexual desire. He, he, uh, Reb Nassim writes about him that the great loyts of Malus Kedushas of Yisvirus at Taiva Kloli she kilos Kol Taiva Zorei she Tavs a Mishkali Efshel of Vayar Lusam. Now, 